Welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. P.P. Ajay Kumar, Professor of English, School of Distance Education, University of Kerala. Today, we will discuss the contributions of Dylan Thomas as a poet. And this part comes under the paper 20th century English literature. Dylan Thomas belongs to the romantic school of poets who came after the world war. After the 1940s, a new group of poets emerged who tried to use the romantic techniques once again and his poetry is considered to be a kind of an emotional outburst. He tries to present these ideas with a kind of emotional intensity that is present in the poetry of Shelley, for example. Dylan Thomas's contribution to poetry in the modern period relies in his ability to use that romantic fervor in poetry. He was born in 1914 in the upland area of Swansea. Dylan Thomas belongs to a family which gave importance to education and uh, he started writing at an early age and his first collection of poetry was 18 poems and he moved to London at the age of 20. Unfortunately he was addicted to liquor. He married Kathleen Mac Namara in the year 1937 and migrated to United States in 1950. Dylan Thomas has become a well-known poet before he migrated to United States and after a few years, that is in 1953, he died in New York. In 1995, the American president Jimmy Carter opened the Dylan Thomas Center in Swansea the first literary powerhouse in UK and the center conducted annual Dylan Thomas festival which celebrates the life and works of one of the most notable poets of that time. His works include 18 poems published in 1934 the Map of Love, published in 1939. Portrait of the Artist as a Young Dog, published in 1940. Dust and Entrances, published in 1946. And we find that some of his most famous poems, like the Fern Hill, Poem in October, are included in the collection Deaths and Entrances published in 1946. The other collections by Dylan Thomas include 26 poems published in 1950, In Country Sleep published in 1952, Adventures in the Skin Trade published in 1953. Adventures in Skin Trade is actually a novel which was unfinished. A Child's Christmas in Wales in 1955, Letters to Vernon Watkins 1957, Rebecca's Daughters 1965, The Year of Love 1969. Dylan Thomas has also written plays under Milkwood in 1954, The Doctor and the Devils and Other Scripts published in 1953. The Beach of Falsy, which is a screenplay published in 1964, are from the poet. Dylan Thomas's poetry is marked for its musical quality and its emotion and imagination. The passion with which he recites the poem is very famous. And it is considered to be 
a, a character of his Welsh background. His language is full of energy, life and feeling and his poetry has great strength and power. We find that the readers will be impressed by the natural force and energy of his lines and the power of his imagination. He deals with divergent topics connected with life, nature, the countryside, birth, death, sex and various other feelings connected with day-to-day -day life. I think it will be good if you distinguish the poems written by Dylan Thomas from that of the modernists who came before him. What was absent in modernism was the kind of rhythm and music and the verbal virtuosity and in Dylan Thomas we find all these characteristics. He looked back to poets like Gerald Manley Hopkins to regenerate the musical quality and the rhythm, alliteration and the verbal density of poetry. We find that Dylan Thomas contributed in bringing back all these qualities to English poetry after the modernist school. But it is a fact that Dylan Thomas's poetry fails in addressing social issues. The contemporary problems faced by the society are not properly addressed in his poetry. His poems mainly deal with nostalgia, life, death, innocence and such feelings, mostly personal feelings. And being a poet who gives importance to emotion, we find that it is natural. He was often very much nostalgic about his young days, the past life and it is quite natural that he writes about his own personal experiences, nostalgic experiences of the past and his personal experiences connected with his own life. The poem do not go gentle into that good night is a poem dedicated to his father. Dylan Thomas was much influenced by his father who was a very powerful man but he found his father in his deathbed devoid of all power and strength and he wrote this poem, Do not go gentle into that good night for his father. It, he thought, would give him the energy to fight, to fight with death. Another famous poem by Dylan Thomas is Fernhill. It is one of the poems which is included in most of the anthologies and the title Fernhill refers to the poet's own farm where he spent his summer vacations in his childhood. The poem Fernhill is a nostalgic poem. It is a recollection 
of his childhood days spent in his own farm we find that the perspective used in that poem is that of a child and it is written the way in which a child interprets the world around him the poem also discusses topics related to time and mortality we find that he uses images and symbols in abundance in the poem fern hill and his language is highly flexible he uses idioms and phrases which suit to the mood of the poem so fern hill is a very good example of his style of writing and the way in which he brings about a kind of aggressive emotional outburst it will be interesting to look at some of the lines of the poem fern hill it presents the innocence of childhood and takes us along with the child towards the adulthood the innocent childhood is compared to the biblical eden and uh, we find that the images used by him and the words are all suitable for the depiction of the innocence of childhood the poem begins like this now as i was young and easy under the apple boughs about the lilting house and happy as the grass was green the night about the dingle starry time let me hail and climb golden in the hay days of his eyes so here we find that the the rhythm and the kind of rhyme that we find in the poem are all contributing to the mood of that poem the second stanza of the poem once again takes us to the innocence of childhood the images used by the poet and the color symbolism that is present are all striking he refers to the childhood and its carefree nature in the first line of the po- of the second stanza and as i was green and carefree famous among the barns about the happy yard and singing as the farm was home in the sun that is young once only time let me play and be golden in the mercy of his means so here we find a, a poet who is highly nostalgic about his childhood days who considers the innocence of childhood as something that is precious then when we read the poem we find that it takes us emotionally back to our childhood days he refers to images from the countryside the hay fields high as the house the tunes from the chimney and fire green as grass and the simple stars during the night and the way he rode to sleep we find that only a poet who has experienced the life in the countryside could present the images of the countryside with the kind of vividness that he does in this poem 
in the last part of the poem he refers to the transformation that happens to the child he says nothing i cared in the lamb white days that time would take me up to the swallow thronged loft by the shadow of my hand in the moon that is always rising nor that riding to sleep i should hear him fly with the high fields and wake to the farm forever fled from the childless land oh as i was young and easy in the mercy of his means time held me green and dying though i sang in my chains like the sea so the poem gives us a vivid picture of his childhood and the way in his in which he has grown to the adulthood and what is striking in this poem is its power and the way in which it presents the emotional attachment that he has towards the place and the power of his memories of the past as we have seen dylan thomas is a poet who belongs to the neo romantic group apart from him george barker w s graham kathleen rain henry trees and jeff henry are some of the poets who belong to the group this group of neo romantics turned to poets like hart crane gerald manley hopkins arthur rimbaud etc and they revolted against the classicism of the new country poets dylan thomas is considered to be the most famous poet among the new romantics it may be because of his style of writing and the emotional nature of his poetry the way he recites his poem is also fantastic and it attracted many listeners and lovers of poetry dylan thomas is considered to be a poet who belongs to the group of new romantics as you are aware romanticism belongs to the last part of 18th century and the early part of 19th century it is believed that romanticism began with the publication of the collection of poems by wordsworth and coleridge lyrical ballads in 1798 and uh, it goes up to 1838 and uh, we find that the period which is now referred as romantic period was a turbulent period in the history of england mainly because of the social tensions that prevailed in that period the transformation that was happening in the society that is the transformation from an agricultural society to an industrial society and the the slogan return to nature was actually a reaction to these transformations the romantic poetry has its own specific style and approach we find that dylan thomas to a great extent imbibed that style and his collections of poems are examples of his romantic nature in dylan thomas's poetry we find the use of auditory images as well as visual images used in abundance and we find that 
these elements are typical of the romantic tradition at the same time what is lacking in dylan thomas's poetry is the social concern the romantics had great concern for the society and they addressed the issues that the society faced but in dylan thomas such a concern is to a certain extent absent and his revolutionary fervor is also questionable it is true that dylan thomas has declared his allegiance to a kind of left wing politics but he has not, has not expressed his political feelings in his poetry so to a certain extent we can say that he share some of the elements of romanticism at the same time certain other elements typical of romantic poetry is absent in his poems so that creates a kind of ambivalence in the kind of term that we use to describe dylan thomas so while describing him as a romantic poet we should understand that he does not share all the characteristics of the 19th century romanticism in his poetry and uh, this is one of the reasons why he has been described as an old fashioned poet because he kept poetry away from politics you know that it was a time when the world was much affected by the war and the destruction that resulted out of the war but we find dylan thomas not affected by those social issues this is certainly one of the criticisms raised against dylan thomas dylan thomas is often compared to shelley he is even considered to be shelley of the 20th century it is true that his poetry is full of natural imagery sexual and christian symbolism and his use of language is highly powerful and energetic we find that he uses word play fractured syntax and personal symbolism in his poetry and his images are centered around the human body sex and the bible so far we have discussed the major features of dylan thomas's poetry and we have seen that he belongs to the school of neo romantics we have also gone through some of the important poems of dylan thomas and i hope you have got some idea about the poet and his poems in order to get a better understanding of dylan thomas's writings please go through the books suggested in the part for further reading thank you